Are you equating social responsibility with double knit clothing? <laughs> <laughs> you hate double. Is that what you think? Sometimes. And how about other times? Other times, <laughs> I don't care. But today you care. Maybe. Because it's Thanksgiving and you don't want a scene. I don't want it for everyone's sake. Jeremy. Jeremy. Yes, ma'am. Those gray wool slacks of yours from the cleaners? Huh? Yes, I did. Oh, you did? You know, I was just thinking how well they would go with the shirt Joe will send you. You know what I'm talking about? Uh -huh. The blue one. Right. The long sleeve. Right. <laughs> it looks so good in the fall. Mother's gonna have a nervous breakdown, but you know that, don't you? I know she wants one. <laughs> <laughs> Won't be really happy until she gets it. God! I just, I just can't understand what happened to you. I mean, what has happened to you? You know exactly what happened to me, Karen. You and everybody else here. You know what the trouble is? You all want to pretend that nothing happened. But because I'm here, you can't. Oh, like, wow, this is so deep. I should have figured that out ages ago. I mean, it's so real. This must be your getting along with everybody, I guess. No, it's just a gut reaction to being told that you can't dress for dinner because you fought in Vietnam. All right, it's time for you to leave. All right, I'll leave you alone. And while you're sitting here feeling sorry for yourself, I'm feeling sorry for you, too. Karen? What? Why don't you just go to hell? I may just do that, Jeremy. Who knows? But I'll tell you one thing. I'm going to wait until I'm dead to do it. I'm not going to spend my entire life making help for myself here and for everybody else. Good for you. I'm going to care about people. Good for you, little Miss Noble Heart. And I'm going to care about myself. You're so pathetic. Just to hell with everybody else. That's you, isn't that right? That's right. You just don't care. I don't care. With the exception of you, there's not a single person in the entire universe that you care about. That's right. Because you just don't give a damn. I don't give a damn. I don't give a shit. I don't give a flying fortified fuck about any of you. And do you know why? Because for 21 years I did. And I did because I thought it made a difference. Well, guess what? It doesn't make a difference. It doesn't even make sense. All right. Well, if that's the way you're going to Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I listen to you. Now you're going to listen to me. You have friends, don't you? Yes. Good friends? Of course I do. Well, I have some too. You do? Yeah, I do. One of them was named Brady. Brady was my friend from Mobile, Alabama. We were a lot like Brady and me. Came from the same kind of family, I think. Nice people. We were both getting ready to come home about the same time. And about a month before we were supposed to get out, Brady got wounded. So we called his parents, you know, to say he was on his way and, and would they mind if he, he brought a friend home with them. He had met him in the hospital or something. Um, and his mother said, fine. And then Brady, he said, this guy's going to need a little help because he doesn't move around very well yet. His mother asked what was wrong. Brady said he's missing an arm and a leg. He's probably going to need a little help. Well, the mother just lost it. I mean, she couldn't handle that at all. So she put his father on the phone. His father really gave it to him. How could you do something like that to us? That's what he said. His father. Don't you know how much you've been looking forward to this? Why are you trying to ruin everything for us? Brady apologized. And when he checked into a holiday inn, he hung himself in the bathroom. I've tried. I've tried to picture <coughs> the expression on his parents' faces when they went to pick up Brady at the airport. The expression on their faces when they saw their little soldier boy was missing an arm and a leg. So I don't go along. I don't care about any of it anymore. I'm a survivor. 